Based on comments left on my videos, I just realized that most people do not know how GPS works and do not know if, if there are any privacy issues associated with the GPS function. Some ask questions like, is there a way to disable the GPS chip? In this video, I will focus specifically on how GPS functions on a modern phone. It is definitely not the same as it was in the 2000s where handheld devices were becoming a thing. But I will focus specifically on the GPS function on a mobile phone. This is very specific. There are no GPS devices on a computer, for example. Not sure many know that either. Yet a computer can find your location almost as accurately as a GPS. Stay right there for another learning moment about the tech involved with the GPS feature on your phone. The biggest misconception by non-techies is that your phone is beaming out your location to the world's satellites constantly. Now, there is some snippet of truth in this, but not in the way most are thinking. So we will eliminate the misconceptions because it makes the operation of the GPS sound like it's part of some conspiracy theory. First, I will discuss the mechanics of the GPS technology itself as it was first created. This has been modified somewhat over the years, but I'll get to that later. We will start with the base technology, which many consumers have used since 2000 or right before that. It was used in military applications way before that though. Let's talk about the original GPS system or Global Positioning Satellite System as created by the US. There are 24 satellites roaming in orbit around the Earth. Now, the flat Earth people will state that there are no satellites, so we'll ignore that for now. Each satellite is constantly transmitting its position coordinate. All the 24 satellites are doing this. Together with the position coordinate, the satellite also transmits the time associated with the location. This time is very exact. Each satellite is synchronized to an atomic clock, so this will be consistent. The way a receiving GPS handheld device gets a position is by acquiring location data from at least four satellites. Again, you're receiving the location of the satellite, not your device. Without aid, this takes a while, up to a couple of minutes, since the GPS device will listen for data on the known frequencies used by the 24 satellites. Once it captures data from four satellites, then it can compute a position fix at the point of the handheld device. The position fix is made by triangulating the known positions of the satellites to the time it takes for the signal to reach your handheld device. As I already mentioned, this is based on an atomic clock, so there's a lot of precision in the time, in milliseconds. The computation of the position is done by the handheld device. The fourth satellite, though, is just used to verify the time. So three are used to triangulate position and one satellite for time synchronization. So far, you will see that the device does not emit any data. It is just a receiver. This, by the way, is the same way a Sirius XM receiver receives streaming audio from the satellite. It is received only. Now, it doesn't end here, and there is data that is emitted from a phone. I'll get to that later, but you will discover that the emitted data is not through the GPS system itself. In the meantime, let's expand the story. There are actually plenty more satellites than the ones offered by GPS from the USA. In the past, there were threats from the US government that GPS signals could be stopped during time of armed conflict, for example. So it should come as no surprise that other countries have come up with their own global positioning systems. There are several. The EU created a system called Galileo. The Chinese made a system called Beidou, and the Russians have their own called GLONASS. Japan also added more satellites, and their system is called QZSS. Now, I mentioned the Flat Earth people. It's interesting how so many different countries decided to fly multiple satellites to Earth orbit without coordinating with each other. 
in fact, with competing interests to the USA. Hmm. Okay, let's move on. The GPS receivers on the phones are actually just a standardized chip. I'm guessing that most are made by Broadcom and are part of the Wi-Fi Bluetooth GPS SoC built into phone motherboards. And to be accurate, the global positioning module on a phone is called GNSS instead of GPS. This is because the positioning system utilizes all positioning satellites. Apparently all these countries agreed to share. Before the 2000s, the US GPS system had some restrictions to accuracy for consumer use. Only the military systems had better accuracy. The USA version had an initial accuracy of 16 feet, but the Russian GLONASS version was refined to 6.6 .6 feet. Today, GPS signals give a more robust position, which is especially important for self-driving cars. The stated accuracy of the new USA satellites is within 11.8 inches. So again, the Broadcom Wi-Fi Bluetooth GPS chip on your phone is doing the position fix. There is a logic to why someone would want to combine Wi-Fi and GPS on the same chip. Because in modern computing devices, location is determined not just by the GPS, but also by Wi-Fi. Now, I will continue to refer to the positioning system as GPS, although I had already told you that it is actually referred to as GNSS. GPS is more recognizable, so we'll stick to that. Now, let's refine the story further. The satellites all emit a signal, which as I said earlier, is a position and timestamp and these are on well-known and pre-published frequencies. Here's an interesting factoid. The GPS signals are very weak radio waves. This is why GPS doesn't work indoors. There's not enough power for it to go through your roof or walls. I will add one more fact here. It is very easy to block GPS. In fact, you don't even need a strong signal to block GPS. If you create noise in the frequencies used by a GPS, you will block GPS reception by all devices in the area. Because the required noise signal would be so weak, it likely wouldn't be detectable from a distance. And thus, even if this is officially illegal in the US per the FCC, in reality, it would be hard to discover. There's a channel with the hacking done on GPS using an inexpensive SDR unit you can just plug into your USB. As that channel states, doing this is supposed to be done in a laboratory environment and only by someone with a ham license, with no effect of blocking the signal for other parties. This channel is called The Danish Hacker, and I will link its video in the description. It's been around a while. I believe in this video, the Danish hacker actually made the GPS detect that he was in a different location. This is easy to do and is done simply by increasing the gain on the local source of GPS signal so it is stronger than the satellite. Some of you will see the privacy advantage of this if you implement the solution done by the Danish hacker in your home. But I don't want to suggest to you that you do anything illegal. I personally have a ham license so I can do this legally as long as I don't interfere with the signal for others. This is interesting though, because in theory, we get our locations tracked, not because we ourselves are cavalier about location settings, but our guests use our Wi-Fi network and then emit location information. If our guest phones get an incorrect GPS position, then it would of course protect the location associated with our IP address. Now there's more. We get to the juicy details about how our phone emits location data using just the GPS. There are two parts to this, so let me start with the more basic part. Supple. Supple, or Secure User Plane Location, is a feature on every phone that is tied directly to GPS use. I will tell you ahead of time that this feature is now owned by Google. Google bought this patent, so Google is the single entity on Earth that coordinates the data from Supple. The way Supple works, your phone will attempt to get the location off the nearest cell tower. Any cell tower. I don't think even the carrier is involved with this, meaning it is carrier agnostic. 
There is a list of all cell towers in the world and their locations are published. Your phone detects the strongest cell tower signal and then identifies that tower and sends it over to supple.google.com. This part is not entirely clear. Though this data is sent over the internet in many cases, I hear it is possible that this data is also sent via the carrier if you're connected to a cell service. I suppose this makes sense as flip phones and non-smartphones need a way to also send data to supple.google.com. So the cell tower is the input to supple.google.com. The output or the return data from Google are the satellites or satellite frequencies that are nearby. By doing this, the connection to GPS becomes almost instantaneous instead of the phone trying out every possible frequency and listening for satellite signals that may be out of range. This is why old handheld GPS devices, like the original ones I had from Garmin, took around two minutes to acquire satellites. This of course would render a phone unusable for critical GPS use, like for car navigation. So since the advent of smartphones, Supple has been the order of the day. All phone devices today use Supple. Likely GPS and cars do so as well. The problem here from a privacy point of view is that Google then knows roughly where each phone is in the world, at least connecting each one to a specific tower. Yes, it is not super precise, but the massive amount of available data here can be used to track large movements of people, for example, armies. Just to theorize here, it would have been possible for intelligence agencies to see mass movements of people from the Warner Group that were headed towards Moscow, all based on supple phone data. Wi-Fi scanning. Now let's move on to the more precise way that location is tracked and recorded using a GPS, and this is something that once again cannot be controlled by the user, just like Supple cannot be controlled. As I mentioned earlier, computers do not have a built-in GPS, but yet computers can accurately determine your locations. How does it do that? It does it by a process called Wi-Fi triangulation. Wi-Fi triangulation is used to find locations indoors where there is no GPS signal. The way it works is like this. The Wi-Fi chip in your device can look for Wi-Fi routers in the area. This has been built into every Wi-Fi chip since 2007, before it was a specialty feature used by hackers. Wi-Fi routers announce themselves with a MAC address, which uniquely identifies the router. A computer will get a list of Wi-Fi routers in the area and it will take the two or three strongest signals and will pass the MAC address of these routers and the signal strength to a network location provider or NLP. Then the NLP will take that input and output an exact location to within six feet. Just to simplify this further, there are only two NLPs that normal phones use. One is Google and the other one is Apple. So to make it clear, Google and Apple both have a database of every Wi-Fi router in existence in the world and its exact location. Each Wi-Fi router is identified by the MAC address. By giving the MAC addresses of at least two routers to Apple or Google, they can look up the device and compute your exact location. Well, you might wonder, what does this have to do with a GPS? Didn't I just say that GPS doesn't work indoors? Guess what, folks? How did Apple and Google build this database of Wi-Fi routers with their predetermined GPS positions? That is really the interesting part and is really the crux of the 24-7 location tracking. If you have a Norby phone or Google Android, then when you're walking around in this world outside, your GPS is receiving data and your phone is connected to the internet. Your phone then performs the same Wi-Fi router detection it can do indoors, but this time it does it in reverse. Your phone sends the Wi-Fi router MAC address, signal strength, and the GPS position to Apple and Google. This is done continuously and it's crowdsourced. So on your street, all your neighbors walking by your house are all reporting the locations of your routers 
and your neighborhood's routers to Apple and Google together with a GPS position to populate the Wi-Fi triangulation database. You cannot stop this as there is no switch to turn this off. Assuming that Apple and Google can identify your device, and it would be irresponsible of me to suggest that they cannot identify your device signal by Apple ID or Google ID, then it is of course expected that both Apple and Google know where you are at all times. And if this Wi-Fi scanning stops, it must indicate that you went indoors. As I said, there is no way to stop this transmission off location to Apple and Google if you have a Normie phone. However, if you have a D-Google phone, meaning a phone running AOSP, Android Open Source Project, like the Brax2 phones, then this signal isn't being sent. A Brax2 phone, for example, does not have any communication with Google, so they cannot possibly receive location information. This should also be true of Linux phones if you happen to have those particular devices. But if you have a standard phone, then assume that your GPS data is leaking constantly. The issue isn't really the GPS itself, but your internet connection. You can assume that if your phone has no internet connection, then Wi-Fi scanning or the GPS data leak should disappear, at least for that moment. Whether it caches it in the background is another issue. This has also gotten more complicated with iPhones since iPhones can communicate with other iPhones using the Apple Mesh Network, which supports AirTag. It is possible that iPhones can still transmit location data even when there is no internet connection, as long as you're not in the remote areas of Greenland where there are no other iPhones. Anyway, I hope this gives you a little bit more understanding. In summary, all standard phones emit your GPS location constantly. Google stores this data in the Google Sensor Vault, and from this data, 940 plus people have been charged in the January 6 Capitol riots, which proved that your phones leak GPS data. Folks, my company creates products that are intended to protect our privacy. We provide phones that have no centralized control and are invisible to big tech. Our most popular device is the Brax2 phone running Brax OS. We also have Pixel phones that have Google removed. They are called de-Googled phones. We have a VPN service, Bytes VPN, which is a stealth VPN in that it doesn't scream that you're on a VPN. We do not put thousands of you on a single server. We have Braxmail, which gives you many domains for privacy and eliminates the metadata from your emails. This means no IP addresses and traces on your email that show where it came from. All these products are on the store on my app, Braxme. Come visit us there. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching and see you next time.